Hey, what's up guys? Christian here. Welcome back to the channel. This right here is the first official episode of the E90 build. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, I've recently purchased this 2009 BMW E90 335i. This is the LCI version. Also comes with the N54 motor. This car came fully modified when I purchased it. 19 inch AG wheels, lowered on coilovers, lots of carbon fiber bits throughout. It also has full bolt-ons, well, kind of, and a stage one tune. So this car really takes off. It's very, very fast. Honestly, it's the perfect package, but I'm not really interested in continuing somebody else's build. Fortunately, that means I'm gonna be stripping a lot of the parts from the E90. We are coming off uh, coilovers might be coming off as well carbon fiber parts are coming off uh, full bolt-ons except the VRSF downpipes I will keep those on there and a full boiler exhaust system which sounds pretty damn good is uh, also coming off so yeah seriously shut up yeah for the most part I'm gonna make this build my own and it's gonna be one insane build guys so uh, if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe with the notification bell on so you don't miss out on any episode of this car anyways let me show you guys what i have planned for the e90 today it's a modification that i highly recommend you know what screw highly recommend you must get this modification for your turbocharged bmw especially n54s and 55 the ones that you're looking to tune and add some extra power first of all just ignore how dirty the engine bay is i haven't really touched this car since i bought it this is pretty much the artwork of the previous owner i feel like if you replace these intakes alone you'll gain like 50 horsepower that's how clogged up these look anyways what i'm going to be installing today is an aftermarket metal charge pipe uh, there's already a metal one here i believe this is from Cobb, but it has like the the setup for the upgraded diverter valves, which is not something that I want. I want a traditional blow off valve, so I needed to get a different charge pipe that has a specific flange for it. Typically on a stock OEM setup, you have a plastic charge pipe, which is absolutely terrible. It's a big fail on BMW's part, but essentially over time, these engines get really, really hot. Uh, those charge pipes start to crack, they blow off, and you get, you know, the notorious 30FF code, your car goes into lit mode, and then you got to get towed. This is the first time I've ever seen a diverter valve upgrade on the 335i. Uh, this one has forged diverter valves. It makes the car sound pretty good. There's a lot of turbo noises, a lot of whistling, um, and it, it essentially makes the sound of a blow valve, but it seems like it's louder. Here, I'll show you guys exactly what the setup sounds like. Full boiler exhaust, the VRSF downpipes, the cob charge pipe with a diverter valve upgrade. It sounds pretty good. I mean, it's very distinctive, but now it's time to change things up a little bit. So let's go ahead and head over to the shop and uh, install the new setup. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. This should be fairly simple to do. And as you guys can see, these are all parts for the E90 that recently came in. Um, charge pipe, old catch can, blow off valve, front mount and cooler, kidney grills, which by the way, a viewer of mine, gave me these for free so very nice of him to do what do we have in here we have inlets intakes and of course we have the full exhaust and whatever's in that box on this episode we're going to focus on the blow off, off and the charge pipe and everything else is going to be split within uh multiple episodes so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything this car is going to go from like i don't know from bolt-ons to stock to bolt-ons within a week um and and thoroughly talk about everything that i do um, with the car, the process, uh, you know, like the reason to upgrade and stuff like that. And this is the charge pipe I decided to go with. You guys should be very familiar with this charge pipe. Um, it's the, essentially the same one I use for the E93 and the HKS blow off valve. This one has a different flange right here, which is meant for the tile blow off valve, which I'll show you guys here shortly. But this is a very good bang for your buck. Uh, it's, it's relatively affordable. And I've rocked it on the E93 with 550 wheel horsepower. Never failed on me. I, it always looked really, really good because the powder coat that's on here is, is quality. It really is. 
and uh, yeah, never had issues with this, so I decided to go VRSF again. And this right here is the blow off, off that I decided to go with, which I'm very excited to try out. I've heard very good things about it. And a lot of BMW guys use it. This is the tile blow off. Um, word of advice, if you're looking to purchase this one, make sure you go with the reputable seller because there are a lot of counterfeits of these floating around and you do not want to get a fake one. That's definitely something you don't want to do. For those of you guys that have been around, you know that I decided to go with HKS for the E93. It had a, you know, like a Japanese sound. It was pretty cool, very loud, high pitched though. This one apparently has more of a deeper kind of sound, more subtle which is something that I actually want. So essentially this is gonna sit right on top right there. There should be a seat clamp that's included with the package so it can sit on there snug. But yeah, that's how it's gonna look like. Oh, you can get these, I think in different colors. I decided to go with black. That way it doesn't really stand out that much. You got some hardware here, the seat clamp. Uh, you got an O-ring as well to make sure you don't have any boost leak and whatever this is. Charge pipe comes with everything you need as well. The hoses, uh, the lines here that's gonna run from the intake manifold onto the charge pipe and some more hardware right here. By the way, if you guys need a charge pipe or any of the VRSF products I installed on the E90, I'm gonna have links down in the description below. I'm actually really happy to tell you guys that I'm actually a vendor for VRSF now. I sell their parts. I've had a uh, long enough experience to know that they sell quality parts at a very good price. So uh, if you guys need any of these parts, uh, make sure to buy them directly from me, vehiclevirals.com. I'll leave a link down in the description below. If you guys are planning to do this on your own, it'll probably be a little bit more complicated because you're going to have the cowl system here for the cabin air filter and stuff like that. And if you have like the stock intake system, you're going to have to take like the box off and everything around it. Uh, luckily for me, this car has the BMS cowl filters, which essentially removes the cowl that's here. And then I have these uh, dual cone air intakes. So much easier to remove, but essentially you remove these. Uh, the hoses here for the diverter valves, uh, flathead, just take these off. And then let's see what else is in here. The charge pipe has a, a few clamps you loosen up uh, on this side and on the other side that leads to the throttle body. Should be a very easy install. Thanks to this guy right here. Now we got a little bit of light so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Now you can really see how dirty the engine bay is. Remember when I told you guys that the engine bay is absolutely filthy? It, it actually gets worse once you start taking things apart. Like, let me show you what I found. So here's a Cobb charge pipe that I had installed. Like, I had to change my gloves at least three times. Look at this. This is all carbon buildup, all blow by. And that can mean one of two things. Well, it can probably mean both things. Either the O-rings are really bad because somehow it's making it out here. But even the inside's pretty nasty. So I'm not even sure the oil catch can that's installed I don't even know if that's doing anything, <laughs> but it's absolutely filthy guys. Check this out. Look, this is all oil residue coming from the engine. Like this is pretty much every N54 owner's nightmare. Like I'm afraid to take off the intake manifold and see what those intake valves look like. I'm sure they're super kicked up. Maintenance was definitely not done on this car. So there's a lot of things that need to be taken care of. Luckily in a few weeks, we're actually dropping the engine on this car to pretty much change all the weak parts, refresh the entire motor, and add a single turbo kit. That's right. These are what the Forge diverter valves look like. Like I said before, first time ever seeing this upgrade on N54. They don't sound too bad. I don't know. Maybe I'll let these go for cheap. Let me know. Uh, shoot me a message on Instagram, at Viocovaros. This is all filthy, guys. It's all covered in blow-by, like all of it. Got the clamp. Like, look at this. You see this? disgusting all right i'm gonna go ahead and remove the remainder stuff uh this hose that connects over to the to the inlet and uh let me get this intake out of the way here this this looks atrocious and and i'm gonna go ahead and install the new charge pipe with the blow off valve so before i continue anything i just gotta get this curiosity thing out of my head all the blow by that i was just talking about it's even worse around the oil catch can like i don't even think this catch can has ever been emptied if I can't even get a grip, it's so oily. By the way, if you guys are not familiar with uh, with what a oil catch can is, essentially it limits the amount of blow by that gets into the intake system and that makes it to the, you know, like your intake valves and then makes your 
car run all inefficient and stuff. So the purpose is, is to stop that. But there's a lot of blow by within the engine and I feel like this is part of it. This is part of the reason. Actually, it's not full, but it's there's a lot of oil in there and it's a lot of nasty oil. What does it look like? Milk, milkshake. If I take a shot, how much money are you giving me? Five dollars. Nah, it's not worth it. I'm gonna die, dude. You gotta be more than that so I can take care of my family. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hmm. Nice. Healthy blow by? Sure. So, my God. The smell. Anyways, uh, this is why it's very important to get a catch can, but one that actually works. I'm not sure what's going on with this. It's probably been sitting in there forever. Let's get back to the install. I went ahead and installed the catch can back on. I cleaned it out. Uh, used some brake cleaner and stuff like that. I think the seal is, is is bad on this catch can. I, I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure that a lot of that um, blow by that was all over the engine bay was coming from here. Anyways, I'm planning to switch this one out for a VRSF one anyways, but I'm not going to do that this video. I'll do that in a future video. Very important, guys. If you are upgrading your charge pipe, a lot of people like to use the existing O-ring that's on the stock one. Well... I would definitely make sure you pull it out and examine it. A lot of the times people get boost leaks and they have no idea. It's because of the bad O-ring that's, you know, that's on the stock one. So make sure you look at it uh, and inspect it. In my case, I just went ahead and bought a brand new O-ring. So, you know, I don't have to take a guess or take a chance or anything like that. I mean, this one looks like it's in pretty good shape, but I'm going to go ahead and install a new one anyways. Here's the rest of the hardware. Here's that new O-ring I was just talking about. This is the clamp that goes down to the intercooler side. And uh, these little covers right here, I'll actually show you guys exactly what this is here in a minute. This clamp right here, we're actually going to reuse uh, the side of the charge pipe that goes to the throttle body. We're actually going to reuse uh, the old one. All right, so once you properly uh, prep the charge pipe before going in, blow off valve, make sure you tighten up these ports here, which are for meth injection and nitrous, which I'm not planning to use, at least not for now. Uh, the map sensor, it does come, uh, the charge pipe comes with its own hardware, so you can install the map sensor. Uh, the O-ring is not in the best condition, but we're gonna upgrade that T-map sensor to, uh, to a 3.5 bar one later on. Well, very soon, within a few weeks. So I just decided to leave it like that for now. Yeah, time to get out on the car. Hey, put that on the tri Put that back on the tripod. <laughs> Let's see what you're doing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at him. We're looking at, looking for, looking for. Shit. I'm not looking for. Professional. Shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if you guys need some work done on your car, just, just bring it to me. Yeah. Uh, just bring it to me. I got you guys. Uh, no promises though. Car might blow up afterwards. Let's see if I actually do this the right way. You're making me nervous. Um, Show me your hands. Okay, let me help you. No. <laughs> I'm a man. I'm just trying to get this clamp on the side. Oh my god, finally. Look who decided to help me out since uh, I couldn't get the, the fitting on correctly. I said, coach, put me in. So you put small, and then you put transition, and then you put big. Don't do it. I'll fart in it. I'll fart in it. Nothing came out. Looks like it came from the Great Depression era. I mean, I already have replacement ones. So I'm just now to do these now. I'm gonna do them when I upgrade the inlets. See that? Some very, very nice clean intakes. They're gonna go on there. Uh, because this is, this, this right here. See that? I don't think there's any air passing through there. So we're gonna do this on a different video. You guys are probably wondering like, why am I putting on all these full bolt-ons that are meant for a twin turbo setup if I'm going single turbo? Essentially, once I get the single turbo, I gotta get rid of a lot of these uh, a lot of these mods. Well, essentially I'm doing that because I know there's a lot of new people here on the channel following the N54 builds. Um, essentially, I wanna show um, all the new people following the channel a budget way to make power. I've done it on the E93, but I was just starting out on the channel though. The videos weren't really that polished, not that informative, so I'm doing it again. I'm gonna rock that setup for like two weeks, then get the engine uh, removed from the car, 
do the single turbo, take care of all the maintenance at that point. Yes, I know I always advertise maintenance first, then performance mods, but I don't have the time to do that right now, but I'll do it once I install the single turbo kit. So before you guys install any of these bolt-ons, charge pipe, intakes, tune, down pipes, whatever it is, maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. And one last thing guys, I forgot to mention, these plugs that came with the charge pipe, you have to put it to the factory inlets right here. So one goes there, and the second cover goes right back here. There we go. Anyways, here's a final product right here, the final installation. We have the towel blow off valve, the charge pipe, the coupling, uh, all the brackets, the line that's running over there, these nasty ass intakes. And also gotta make sure you put these clamps on here uh, so that way they don't pop off. Go ahead and tighten those up and we'll see what she sounds like. Sounds like a dying turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that's how that setup sounds like. Uh, not only did I increase the reliability in the car, well, assuming it was OEM, I already had uh, a metal charge pipe. But anyway, it sounds pretty good. Tile blow off valve versus HKS. I guess they're both very good in their own way. Um, I would highly recommend it if you guys want to purchase any of those products. I will have a link down in the description below to all of them. Guys, if you own an N54 or N55, Make sure and get an aftermarket charge pipe. Like I said, I have links down in the description below to get that. Let me know what you guys thought of the sound of the blow valve tile. I used to have HKS on my E93 and I think they're both very good in different ways. I guess it's all personal preference. This, uh, the, the tile one is a little more subtle, but I'm sure it's gonna sound a lot more aggressive once we, you know, push out more PSI uh, and once we go single turbo. I think on the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and straight pipe the E90, similar to like what I did with the E93, but with a little bit of a twist. You guys do not want to miss out on that video so make sure to subscribe with the notification bell on that way you don't miss out as always thanks for watching until next time